Um, for the worksheet, yes. All right, hi everybody. This is Mr. Polly. Woohoo! And welcome to the Goose Bitten. Yes, I'm recording it right now. Goose Bitten podcast. If you haven't heard, in ninth hour, I just got bit by a goose, which I suppose is I deserve for uh, having a stuffed one in there. I should have brought it out there to do it. Um, KMT stands for Kinetic Molecular. You hear them out there? Theory. So we're going to go over the theory which explains why we think gases act the way they do. And STP is standard temperature pressure, which we've heard before. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, and standard pressure is one atmosphere. And then the laws that we just did in the ring of ping, um, Boyle, Gay-Lussac, Charles, and then there's a couple other ones we threw in there too. So here we go. Pressure. Pressure is only important for gases in chemistry. Pressure is the force of a gas on a container. So if I had a square container like this squared container right here, um, the gas particles would bounce off the walls and go one place or the other. Now when we did Ring of Ping, there was always somebody who like found the wall and like kind of duck duck goosters was kind of grinding against the wall on the end there. So that is not what gas particles do. They bounce all around. So this is the path of a gas particle right here showing how they move quickly and bounce all over the place. And pressure is the force of the gas on the container. And that's pretty much it. This is a barometer. This barometer is hard to read. Probably even worse over the internet. But looking at this, this in here is an mercury. It's mercury. And I have two gases pushing down on it. One is the atmospheric pressure, which is outside, just like the regular pressure. And then this is the gas pressure, so this is the pressure of whatever I have inside the bulb. And then these are supposed to be little arrows that I think are really hard to read, and only because I know what's going on do I know what's happening here. Now, if in let's pretend land, the pressure outside and the pressure inside were the same, my mercury levels would be what? Right now, they're not the same. If the pressures were the same, wouldn't their levels be the same. The outside would be pushing as hard as the inside, so it would be the same. In this case, what's pushing harder? Um, the gas or the outside? Because look, right, oops, let me go back to the black. Here's one line, here's the other. So the inside's got to be pushing harder than the outside, which is why it's not level. And that's how barometers work. Now, who cares about barometers? Um, whether people care about barometers when you have high pressure, that means that weather is stable. So you'll have a nice couple of days. When you have a low pressure, that means you're going to have um, storms and stuff like that. So they've got those silly little er, 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 mm, mm, fronts with the curvy parts that Tom Skelling shows. Okay. I know. No one wants to see those. So here we go. The description, wrong word, sorry, sorry, sorry. The explanation, because a theory is an explanation, and a description is a, not a theory, but a law. Good. The explanation of why the gases behave as they do is called the kinetic molecular theory. I think it's funny, I still hear the goose squawking out there. And here are the four parts of the kinetic molecular theory. Gas particles are point masses. So in math class, um, they probably tell you if you've got a line, or another line, or another line, or another line, how thick is a line in math class? Do you measure how thick the line is, or do all lines have the same thickness? They all have the same thickness, right? How thick is it? It's not thick at all. Right? The thickness is nothing. Right? It's got length but no thickness. So let's transform that to a point. Does a point have a thickness? If a line doesn't have a thickness, does a point have a thickness? No. Um, what about length? A line has length. Does a point have length? No. So what this means is gas particles are point masses, and that means they have no volume, but they do have mass. And that's kind of a make-believe thing. We treat it like that. Whoops. We treat it like that.
but it's not really, really, really what happens. Okay. Particles are not attracted to themselves or the container. Again, we pretend that's true, but we kind of don't really pay attention to it. It's kind of like if you say, oh, I don't like broccoli. If you're starving to death, will you eat broccoli? Yeah. So it's like, I won't eat broccoli no matter what, unless I'm starving, or really just kind of very hungry, or that's it. Particles move in rapid, random, straight-line motion. This is the only thing that's actually true, wholly and completely. Collisions are perfectly elastic. This one also has its issues. They're not perfectly elastic. They are um, nearly perfectly elastic. If it was perfectly elastic, if I dropped a ball and it's one meter high, it would bounce back up to be exactly one meter high and then fall back down. And it would do that over and over and over again. It would go bounce, 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 and never, ever stop. You probably can't hit us on the podcast. Hear what on the podcast? Hmm. <laughs> Connect molecular theory does a lot of rounding, and basically all this does is it, it writes down why all of these things are bad, and then the only good one is this one right here. Okay, I'll stop that now. Actually, I can tell you if we'll see that or not. Uh, probably not. Okay, so those are the things that are wrong about it. So now I get to do my favorite slide of this whole thing. Can I go, everybody? Is that all right? No. Okay. I wonder if you get work once comp for getting bit by a goose. Or do I just get laughed at and say, you got bit by a goose? You're an idiot. <laughs> that would have been funny if I took days off and Affleck would pay for it. That's quite clever. Yeah, I just got that. Affleck's a goose. <laughs> it's a duck. If you, you, if you follow kinetic molecular theory perfectly, you are ideal like a Disney princess. Ideal princess is like an ideal woman, which means they don't actually exist. Your ideal woman, of course, is hot. So if she's hot, if, if your ga ideal gas is hot, that means the particles move quickly. They have no friends. Now, girls always think their friends are interesting and fun, and everybody loves to talk to them. But really, they're not. Girls, your friends are boring. They're annoying. Nah, 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 nah. What you're talking about is not really that interesting ever to guys, and really, they're not really that interesting to yourselves, and guys are, all the guys are laughing in here. And of course, at home, without the members of the opposite sex listening, you're all going, yeah, that's true. Guys, the other news, your friends are even more boring. So that is true. Only guys actually kind of know that. It's just the only option we have. So that's the difference between the two. Um, Disney princesses have no friends which is nice. You don't have to deal with the annoying friends. You know, Belle doesn't have this best friend you have to spend time with, and, oh, let's go see this movie, and all oh, this art thing would be great, and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to worry about that. Disney princesses have no friends at all, which is nice, so the particles are unattractive. They're also low pressure. You never hear a Disney princess asking you to do something. You're never saying, Beast, we need to do this. Ah. No, you don't hear that at all. Dopey, you really need to hit the books. Nope, 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 nope. It's all just fine and dandy. So low pressure, and what that means with real gases is if they're low pressure, um, the particles are far away. So if they're far away from each other, right, they're not banging into each other, there will be less attractions. Or is that fewer attractions? But either way, there'll be less attractions, um, and there will be fewer collisions. And fewer collisions would mean that the fact that the collisions aren't perfectly elastic doesn't, they don't matter as much. And there's one part before I say Disney princesses don't care that your friends are dishes and candlesticks, which is true. No one ever complains about the friends of um, Prince Charming or whatever. Um, 
But the other thing is, and I forgot to write this down, um, all of these princesses always live in a big old house. They live in a big old house, so that would mean the volume of the gas would be large. And if the volume is large, that means there would be, they'd be farther away from each other. So they're not going to have collisions, so the inelasticity of it won't be a big factor. And they're, since they're so far away, they won't be as attractive to each other either. Now, I didn't explain why um, particles being fast makes them more ideal. So remember, ideal gases have no attractions for each other, perfectly elastic collisions and things like that. So let's pretend we have, see, who's got the coolest car in the classroom? That's got to be Will. Will's got his Volvo, which he got all excited about. So Will's got this Volvo, and he, of course, is trying to pick himself up a new Disney princess. So what he does to try and pick up a Disney princess is he's going to drive right by the Disney princess, honk his horn, and say, hey, baby, I've got a rose for you, or something like that. Now, because he drives by at 195 miles an hour in his mom's Volvo, the Disney princesses do not know what he is saying, and the chance for an attraction is very, very low. So the faster two particles go by each other, the less likely they are to have an interaction, which would be an attraction. Okay, So that means the faster the particles go, the less attraction, the less interaction, the more ideal they are. Remember, ideal particles are loners. They're off by themselves. They're not attracted or affected by anything. Good. Boyle's Law. Picture Boyle. He's a funny-looking guy. Um, relates volume to pressure. As volume goes down, pressure goes up. As volume goes up, pressure goes down. We talked about this in the ring of ping. It basically means P1V1 equals P2V2. This is the mathematical equation. You should write down with Boyle's Law and be able to think ring of ping. It is also the only one that has an inversely um, related graph. Inversely and indirectly, I've tried and tried and tried to see what the difference is. Um, inversely and indirectly proportional. They both mean the same thing. I've tried to look it up. If anyone can find the difference between the two, if there's like a real significant difference, I'd be happy to do that. So I'm moving on because already my podcast is too long. Chuck's Law. Here's a picture of Chucky. Oh, I forgot a picture of Chucky. I should have had a picture of Chucky from the Child's Play movies. Um, temperature and volume, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And what's interesting about Charles's law, we know that as the temperature goes up, volume goes up. But notice as the temperature goes down, there comes a point when the volume of the gas is zero. How can something, gas, have a volume of nothing? It can't. So that's one of the reasons why we know this point can't really exist. And that point where the volume is zero was at negative 273 degrees Celsius. We call that absolute zero. Um, the other thing is tomorrow you can bring in a happy little compressed air can. If you bring in a compressed air can, we can use it as a demo to show that the particles, when you spray a compressed air can, which particles do you think will leave more quickly? Fast particles or slow particles? Fast particles will leave more quickly. Fast particles, are they warmer or colder? Warmer. So if all the hot ones leave, you're left with cold ones. So when you spray your can of compressed air, your can gets much, 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 much colder. And that's actually how refrigerators work, is they compress air and decompress air in order to um, cool things off. gay lussac X law. Temperature and pressure. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And people have chuckled about this, and we all know the sadness about dysentery. But here's the equation for gay lussacs law. Think ring of ping. Think he looks funny. And move on. Combined gas law. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. I think I have goose flu. Sorry, I just coughed. I probably do have the goose flu. One of the other laws we're going to talk about is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. We didn't do anything with this in the um, other outside in the ring of ping. All you do is you add them up. So if I have hydrogen and helium particles, 2.9 atmospheres of pressure plus 7.2 atmospheres of pressure equals 10.1. This is strange. You would expect things to have some kind of interaction with each other. 
So if they had some sort of, if I put 10 people in a class, or if I put five people in a classroom, and this is the classroom, here's my desk, people do not literally spread out to be as far away as they possibly can. That's unpersonlike. Some people will pair off and they'll sit together and they'll talk about something or other. All right, especially girls that think their friends are interesting. Where we use Dalton's Law. Where we use Dalton's Law is we can take a propane tank, because we all have those, with a little knob thing on it. If we want to find out how much propane we can put in water to collect a gas, we often collect it over water. So we know the pressure, this says bar, the pressure outside will equal the pressure inside as long as this is one continuous line. But what's kind of weird about this is this, obviously, if I said this is propane, I'll call that P. So I've got a bunch of P's in here. But the other thing that happens is water also evaporates a little bit. So I've got P's representing the pressure of propane and W's representing the pressure of water. And you have to subtract the pressure of water off of the total pressure to get it. Ideal gas law, if you're sitting here in class, you've already given up on trying to write things out. PV equals NRT. I'm sorry, mass RT over molar mass. PV equals NRT. And then there's one other one. Density equals PMM over RT. And D is density, which of course is mass. I see mass here. And volume, I see volume here. R is a constant. My constant is 0.0821. And that says I have to use liters, I have to use atmospheres, I have to use moles, and I have to use the temperature of Kelvin. Um, what is 0.0821? What is pi? It, that thing right there. But what is pi? It's 3.14. But what is pi? A ratio of, is it diameter to circumference or something like that? Something like that. But what is it? It's just some dumb number that gets you the right answer and lets you go to college and be successful. Right? And date a uh, Disney beauty queen. Right? That's your goal. What is pi? 3.14. What is R? 0 0.0821. Review. Equation, 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 equation. Guesses are unattractive points that move around and bounce perfectly. Toodles.